What's up guys? This is going to be a quick video on how to export images out of Rhino so you can layer them in Photoshop and make very quick diagrams for whatever presentation you have coming up where you don't have a final design but you spend some time 3D modeling but you have to get these ideas out, right? So in, I'm going to be using Rhino 6 and I'll reference some of these things that are used for Rhino 5 but essentially the interface is pretty much the same. The only difference is they've added this very nice uh, rendering view for Rhino 6. So to get started, you want to first select your view, right? So when you set up your views, you have named views and snapshots. So named views are both in Rhino 5 and Rhino 6. Snapshots is only Rhino 6. The difference is that snapshots will save a lot more things than named views. So you can save your layers, what's hidden and what's not, where the position of the objects are, what rendering settings you have, and what view settings you have. So you can save a lot more settings uh, on your snapshots, which allow you to change from, say, this isometric view. I can explode the building, move everything around, save that as a different snapshot, and then I can travel between the different uh, settings, the one where the building is completely composed and the one where the building would be exploded. So I can save this clay render view and once it pops up down here I'll know I'll be good and there it is so to set up your view I like to go for isometric views but you can really it's up it's up to you really to set up uh, standard views right here for your drop down menu and display modes you go to set view isometric and in this case I'm using the northwest view and I like to crop my view just a bit further away than I need to so I can have further uh, I have further control in Photoshop so from here in your drop down menu for your display modes you can go to display options and here over on display modes you can create copies of all the standard display modes that they have for Rhino so I've created a copy of rendered and a copy of technical right and I've, I've uh, named those clay render, right? Clay render is my copy of my rendered view. And then f copied from my technical view, I've created back edges and clean lines. And I'll show you what those look like. But for your clay render, you have these options here. So first of all, the name is at the top. You can change the title. The background, in this case, I have set to transparent. That way I can underlay things in Photoshop much easier without erasing white space or anything like that. Uh, if you have an object floating around, you can create a ground plane for yourself. In this case, it wouldn't matter because I have a terrain that acts as my ground plane. You have a lot of settings for what curves you want to show. right? And then in this case, they're showing in the color of their layers. But I don't want any of those here. So then you have your surface edges. right? So you can add an edge thickness so you can see those lines. And I have color reduction set to 100 which basically means that if you have them at zero you can see those colors as they are in their layers but as you increase from zero to a hundred you start getting rid of that color dulling it out until it goes completely black but in this case for my clay render view I want no lines right uh, light objects if you have lights that are on other layers that are off but you still want them to affect the model you can set those things here now your lighting scheme right default lighting this is kind of what Rhino 5 looks like which you can mess around with in Photoshop and use, but Rhino 6 has added this ambient occlusion effect, which is much, much nicer and much easier to work with. So that's my clay render view. Now you have more options down here, such as your grid, if you want to show your axes on your model. In this case, I'm on top of my model. I'm on top of the axes, so you wouldn't see it in any case. Uh, you have your object settings here, and then under objects, you can edit how points, curves, surfaces, and meshes look. Right? So finally, your shadow settings. So you can set the grain on your shadows, like the resolution, uh, how quality, how soft they are, how blurred they are, and so on. Even the color. You can set the layer, the shadows to have different colors if it helps you with your diagrams. And so I'll hit OK. And now this is one view that I'm going to export, right? Now I'll go to my other view, clean lines. And so the same settings that were applied to clay render you can edit for clean lines right you can edit how everything looks so in this case when I go to objects and I go to curves I make sure I use a single color for all curves and that color is black right 
again polygon color so you can edit that here too you can make a fixed color black in this case just to make all the lines appear black I'm using a white background here rather than a transparent one so that that checkerboard transparent doesn't throw me off but and I'm able to use these lines with a white background much easier in Photoshop later and I'll show you that once we get there so I have silhouettes and edges shown here that looks good and my back edges view alright let me see what that looks like is simply the back edges of the buildings so there we go right that kinda gives me like an x-ray feel to the image and I want to make sure that my curves, my lines, are all set to black. Right, and so there we go. Go back here and deselect edges. All right, there we go. So I can see my hidden lines and my silhouettes in the same view. Okay. Lastly, I'm going to create, actually I'm going to save this as a first snapshot, back edges, okay, okay. Now the last one I'm going to use, which you could use to explain program or any other thing that color might help you out with, would be a copy of the shaded view, right? Or using the shaded view if you have your layers set. I'm still saving the snapshot. All right. So we go to our shaded view and now shaded is showing everything as the colors of their layers so you can change the color of the layers according to program or anything else really so I'm gonna keep the layers how they are right my purple is kinda like this diagonal surfaces that are intersecting with the buildings my green is my landscaping my blue is my roof and so on and the darker blue becomes my whole edit, my whole site so I'm gonna keep this for now my shaded view so in Photoshop you want to have a document open and you want that document to have the dimensions of the image that you're using and the resolution of the image that you want to be like that you want that you would like to have so once you have that we're ready to start exporting these images out of Rhino so you're gonna do a view capture to file the capture to clipboard sorry and the reason why I do capture to clipboard rather than capture to file is because capture to file would create many different files that I have to then drop into Photoshop where capturing the clipboard I don't mind just having those files in the Photoshop uh, file or those images in the Photoshop file rather than have them in a folder separately so if you capture the clipboard on Rhino 6 is going to give you these settings right for your resolution if you want a custom resolution right and exit it out of the viewport if you want a transparent background the axes grid and so on so I'm gonna keep it as is now for Rhino 5 you want to do a dash before view captured a clipboard and the reason for that is in Rhino 5 and Rhino 6 you'll get all your options here on the command line when you put that dash in front of view captured a clipboard so width and height right here are in pixels what the image will be exported as right transparent background no and so on so I'm just gonna export how it is right so you captured a file what the, once that command is done we can go into Photoshop and Control V on PC or I believe Command V on Mac will paste that image into the Photoshop right so I'm not gonna move it and the reason being is when I switch now to my back edges and I view capture the file here capture the clipboard sorry and when I paste here it's gonna overlay exactly where it has to go right and I'm gonna do that again for my clay render you capture the clipboard paste that there and finally my clean lines you capture the clipboard and so on and paste that here so now what we want to do is we want to put the color at the bottom well actually the clay render at the bottom the color just above right so I'm gonna name those the render color hidden lines and my clean lines so my clean lines I'm gonna set to do a linear burn and that's gonna make the lines go through right 
before I keep going any further, I'm going to blow up this image to the size I need it to be. So I'm going to click on my top layer, hold shift, and click on my bottom layer. And then control T is going to let me resize all of these images at once. So place that there. So what we're seeing now is my lines layer on top of my hidden lines, right? And then my hidden lines I can also set to linear burn and now they're going on to the uh, color layer. But the color layer I'll set to overlay and we'll only see those colors combined with the shadows. So this is one way to kind of show program in a very nice graphic way. Now I don't like how my lines are showing. They're too dark. It's darkening the image way too much. So if I hold, if I click Control I, I'll invert that layer. If I change the blend mode of lines back to normal over here, we can see that, and I'll change it to a screen. So now my lines are white. Now that's reading much better, right? I have my dark edges, my dark back edges, my X-ray, which is reading very nicely, and I have my white silhouettes around, right? Now, I can take this a step further, right? If I go into color and I go under image, hue saturation, right? With the color layer selected, and I can change the level of color here, right? I can increase the saturation, I can increase the lightness of it, right? Uh, you can select your render layer, and you can do level adjustment so you can make your shadows much more pronounced right but that's generally the workflow that I use for creating diagrams very quickly for a presentation because this now gets thrown into InDesign or Illustrator for a book or for a poster board and it's very easy to use um, lastly you can copy this workflow for anything you can use it for your top views for your front views and you can even use a clipping plane clipping plane and we can use that to draw a section through the model you can enable clipping plane and then move it into the model. Enable clipping plane. Right, so now we have a section cut and we see that we have a post shade. And this is all editable again under display options, how that line shows up. And if we go to the clay render view, right, we see that we have a section that's rendered. And if you go to the standard rendered view, there I have the poche with the render. So you can combine, as long as you save the named views or the snapshots, you can combine all these different types of graphics that you have in Rhino and overlay them very quickly in Photoshop to create these sort of diagrams. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave me a comment below on why. And if you didn't, please also leave me a comment below on how I can further explain these concepts or if you'd like me to show you other techniques in Photoshop that you can use for rendering or any, sort of render, any other sort of rendering information that you'd like to see. Again, thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Have a good one.